Hello and welcome, I'm Bertha Stormtrooper and today we're going to be taking a look at the Transformers War for Cybertron Earthrise Titan Class Scorponok and I love this toy. Now this is, I think, the biggest figure I have ever attempted to review so I'm doing something different here. I'm going to be doing the front point of view where you guys are actually looking at me and I'm just going to have it at the table. There's just no way that I could put the camera anywhere far enough away and still be able to reach the figure to review it in my regular style. So we'll see how this goes. Um, so here is a Scorpinox box. Um, I got him online. I ordered him from Amazon and he's absolutely enormous. Uh, just just mind blowing. I never had a G1 Scorpinox. I still don't. It's one of the few, uh, one of the G1 figures that I'm missing. So I've I've never really had a hands-on experience with Scorpionot. This is kind of my first Scorpionot game, and it's just such a cool figure. Here we've got some really cool artwork of Scorpionot on the front there, some uh, Earthrise artwork on this side, and then just a continuation of this artwork going over the side here. And then on the back we've got the product shots of Scorpionot in robot mode, in city mode, and in actual scorpion mode. This thing is absolutely enormous. Now, of course, with the figure, we get the map. And this, instead of being part of an insert, it actually just comes as a separate piece. And you also get the little decoder here. So we wouldn't be able to see it on camera, but it's got Unicron up here towards the center. And then it's got some other stuff down here. I haven't really taken the time to read it because I haven't been collecting the maps or anything like that. You also get these uh, three little fire pieces. It's kind of weird that it only came with the three, where like Skylinks came with like six or seven pieces. This guy only came with three, so you really only get the one configuration to do this and kind of, I guess, hope that you have other figures that you can use theirs to kind of uh, use it with this figure, I guess. If you break them up, they don't really match up, so I, at least for me, I'm kind of OCD. I like to have them all looking the same, so I'll be borrowing some of Skylinks and some of the other figures' blast effects to use with this figure. And of course, we got the instruction sheet, which is an absolute poster. So there you go. <laughs> all right. So that's about it for the package and what comes with it. Now, the instructions don't say anything and the box also doesn't say as far as the head figure and the headmaster. So it's a double headmaster and a triple changer. And so it didn't give us any real indication of what the name should be. So I'm just gonna be calling them. I'll probably bounce back and forth between Zarek and Black Zarek because I've watched both continuities. So as they come to me, I'm probably gonna bounce. It's probably just gonna be even, um, a completely unconscious so you know if it happens there it is so now with that let's be done with the box and let's get to the figure and here we have Scorpionok as he comes in the box in robot mode and he is absolutely breathtaking and he's absolutely enormous in fact let's check him out here Scorpionok in robot mode stands approximately 21 inches tall at the top of the head and uh, of course that's accounting for the fact that I've got the legs a little spread apart so let's try that again with the legs closed and we're looking at eh, still about 20, it's approximately 21 inches uh, standing straight up to the top of the head. He's uh, not as big as Metroplex was for the Titans class or um, even Fortress Maximus, uh, which I don't have available to me at the moment. Everything's still packed over there behind the camera. Um, but um, he's not as big as those figures, but I don't think he should be. Uh, uh, he was always a little shorter than Fort Max, so I think it's fine that he's a little shorter. Absolutely just stunning and breathtaking. Just taking a look at the figure all the way around. You're gonna hear me say this stunning or breathtaking a lot because I'm so taken aback with this figure. Just what a beautiful figure. It looks like, to me, it looks like the G1 cartoon just stepped out of the screen. It, it's just absolutely beautiful figure and, and I just cannot say enough good things about it. And it's also a lot of fun and easy to handle. Articulation wise, the head can move side to side. Now it does have this weird collar piece around the back of the neck here and this was floating around on the box when I got it it was loose uh, it doesn't seem to serve any other purpose other than to just kind of sit behind the neck it's uh, kind of a weird choice that they made it a separate piece and the one that pops off so easily uh, they probably could have glued that on I don't know why that is so that may or may not pop off while I'm messing with him here the head can actually go up and down a little bit uh, that's about it there is a joint in there that lets the platform that it sits on kind of just move up and down so there's that there um, the shoulders can move up and down all the way around. They can also go in and out. There is a rotation at the elbow, a bend right below the elbow. And then the fingers are also individually articulated for the thumb and then the two claw fingers there. 
Uh, he does have waist articulation. Legs can go forward and backwards all the way. They're really tight. I'm not going to fight it, but they can go all the way. And they, of course, can go in and out as well. Rotate at the thigh. Bend at the knee. You've got a double bend at the knee due to transformation. The um, uh, toes can have an uh, ankle toe. So they don't go up and down. They just have the ankle toe. So you can do some wide leg poses with them. Let's see if he cooperates. Let's see how wide we can get him on. There you go. So you can actually do that with him and get some action poses with him, which is really, really neat. Really he does have some accessories now. Unfortunately, and a little disappointing to be honest, uh, no gun, no handgun or hand cannon or whatever you want to call it. Uh, kind of disappointing. I'm hoping somebody comes out with one of those. But he does have these cannons here, which you can unpeg. And then you can kind of peg here, so he can kind of use that as a gun. I'm not really impressed by that, <laughs> to be honest with you. But there are several different ports that you can use to peg those, so you can like maybe we take that back off. You know, if you want to maybe put it here on the side of the arm, that's something you could do if you wanted to put it maybe there. You know, he's got different places. You can, you know, put him on the side of the leg there maybe. He's got options, but of course we know these are supposed to be up here. So, yeah, I kind of wish you would have had that big orange rifle. Uh, that would have been cool. Now, he does have, around the back here, he's got this piece. So this can be popped off. We're going to go to this side here. And this piece has these little cloths that just kind of go up and down or in and out or open and close. He's got these panels here attached to the side of the leg. So you can pop these off. And you can clip these together just like this. And then you can attach these with these pegs to the back of this part here. And this is going to create kind of like a shield slash claw weapon. And using these pegs on the back port here or on the back side here, you can peg them to the side of the arm. Either arm will work. It's just fine. And let me just find a good spot here for it. There you go. So now you can attach a shield for Scorpionock and you can open and close these, however, you know, whatever looks best to you. So he's got kind of that shield pincer weapon that he can hold on either arm. Um, and then finally, uh, getting into transformation, uh, we're going to take a look at the head real quick. Now we can go classic POV um, review style for Zarek here. So of course we can take off the head itself, which is going to reveal Zarek's head. And we can open this guy up to reveal the little Zarek figure. And you know, he's your standard Titan or Headmaster uh, that we've been getting. So this guy is approximately just a little over one inch, maybe almost just under half, uh, one and a half inches uh, tall. And kind of hard to shoot because these new Headmasters are a lot smaller than the originals. But there you go. You can kind of see what he looks like right there. That's There you go. As far as articulation, the arms can go forward and backwards. They are on ball joints, so they can go forward and backwards. They can go in and out just a little bit. The head is on a ball joint, so it can look up and down and side to side. And then, of course, the legs are all pinned together. He can uh, you know, do a sitting position. He can also bend at the knees for those little sitting positions. So that's about it for little Zarek here. We'll set him off to the side and then we'll take a look at this guy here. So to transform this into the, I guess the bigger Zarek mode, we're gonna go ahead and unpeg. Let's see if I remember, I haven't done this one in a while. Yeah, we're gonna unpeg here on the back and then what is the eyes of the scorpion. Go ahead and take this purple panel here, fold this up, take the face plate and this should come straight forward. Oh, and this is a very cool thing. I actually should probably show this. So it's kind of hard to see, but under the first, under the face plate, there's a screw where you would be able to remove the visor if you wanted to. And if you see the eyes, or well, the face actually has eyes molded and painted in. So you can, if you want, actually remove the visor and have a visorless Scorpionock who, who's showing his eyes. So that's an option that you have if you want to do it. But again, you're going to take the, uh, the, the top of the head, pop it open, take the face plate or the, the visor piece, and hinge this forward. There's a double hinge there, and this is just going to come up and cover the head or the face of Scorpionot. Now we can take this piece here, unpeg it, and then take the eye pieces, and these are going to come down to form the legs of our robot. Take these side panels here. These are going to pop up, or sorry, out, and then up. Up and out. We can take the arms now, bring them down, and bring out the fist. There and there. Bring this piece down. This chest piece is going to come down. It's going to peg in right there. 
Now, as far as the claws go, you can do a couple of things here. The pictures on the back of the box show it just like this. And you can just leave these ear pieces hanging there. Or if you go by the instructions, they got these little tabs here, which you can tab to the side of this back plate here. So you can just kind of tab those in there. Down there, get everything straightened out. And there you go, there's your robot mode, just missing one thing. And of course, we'll bring in little Zarek one more time, fold them over to create the head and pop them in place. And there is Zarek in robot mode. And here in robot mode, he's approximately five and a half inches. So he's just a little shorter than your standard deluxe. Here he is next to Crosshair. So you can see another deluxe, how he looks standing side by side. And then here he is next to Snapdragon. So you can kind of see the size differences there, uh, Voyager of the Lux, and then of course, Zarek in his robot mode. Here you can see what those guys look like together. It's a very, very good size for this figure. Very impressive. The articulation, really nice because of the neck or head articulation on the little Zarek, you get side to side and you get a little bit of up and down there. It kind of feels like a little tiny ball joint in there. The arms could go all the way around. Now you are going to have panels here. So you saw what just happened. That is going to pop off, but you can go all the way around if you can work with your kibble. I'll pop that back in place there. And then the shoulders can go in and out as well. Uh, there is a rotation at the elbow, double bend at the elbow, nothing at the wrist other than the hinge to uh, let it in and out. The waist, uh, he needs to set those off to the side. Waist can rotate, the legs can go forward and backward at the hip, in and out, turn at or rotate at the thigh and bend at the knee. And then of course he also has quite an impressive ankle tilt. Really, really nice. So again, very impressive figure and just very cool the way that he interacts with all of the modes for Scorpion. I'm just gonna pop these on one last time so that we can do one last shot for him and then we'll get back to the main event so there he is there's the headmaster part uh zarek uh the headmaster for scorpion Eye. now moving on the transformation for the big robot in the scorpion mode we're going to take the head off and you see that purple piece just came off with it it doesn't need to come off that can stay right where it was at take the head set it off to the side we're going to take the accessories and take these off as well. So we're going to take off these cannons and we're going to take off these um, shield pieces that we had here and we can set these off to the side. Actually, um, so I already made a my first mistake. We're not going to take the head off for scorpion mode. We're going to take the head off for uh, city mode. So we're going to leave the head right on. We're going to get in the transformation. We're going to start with the arms, bring them up and bring the claws out to the side. Don't worry about it. I know it's cutting off on camera right now. We're going to fix that in a moment. Okay, we are going to come around the back. And this whole wrap piece here, this is going to just unclip. And you're just going to let it hang. We're going to come to the feet here and bring these out. And then get the little tips of the feet and fold them out. Same thing on this side here. And follow these guys out. You can see already Scorpionok has wheels here. And then he's got this little roller here. These are going to come into play here in just a moment. Now you can reach in here, there's a little panel that you can reach up in here and pull down and that's going to close that section off. Uh, let's see, we're going to come up here to, let's hold this up for a moment. We probably should have done this first. Uh, take these panels and we're going to open these up and we're going to rotate them at the waist. And this is going to let us start laying him down. Now we can bring this piece down and I'm going to fix this. Take the head and rotate it around. 180 degrees so that the back of the neck is now facing what was the front of the chest and you can angle the head if you want or you can leave it up it's completely up to you now we're going to take the figure we're going to lay it down and start working on the legs so we're going to open these panels up right here on the side open this and bring the toes all the way in and then you're going to take this part of the toe and push that all the way in leave that there for now do the same thing on this side Close the foot, close the toes. Now, get um, your hips straightened out and then these panels, we're gonna open these back up again. Let, get them flat and then take the knees and bend them over at both joints until they're completely folded over. Like that. 
and there really isn't anything that's gonna peg on the top here. I kind of expected it to, but it didn't. What we is going to peg is these pegs on these purple panels here. There's a couple of pegs here that are gonna peg down here into these ports on the side there. That is gonna help hold the leg in place there. Same thing on this side. Finally, we're gonna take the tail here and we're gonna open this up. I'm gonna fold that over, push this piece out, push this orange piece out and then flip the tip up and over. There are two uh, kind of like T pegs here and here and there are two ports, one here and one here. These are kind of tricky to get. You're gonna just line them up and peg them in place. Okay, and at this point, we're just gonna start straightening things out, straightening up the, the feet any way you want. We're gonna bring in these accessories one more time. We're gonna separate these. The tail piece or the shield piece here, this can go down here again. And you can just pick it right back on that platform, just the way it was on the back of the robot mode. We're gonna separate these, and then these are going to peg in with these pegs right up here on the side of the legs. there and then finally we're gonna take our guns and we're gonna put them on what is now the top what was the back of the shoulders is now the front of the claws and we just put them up here and point them any way you wish and here is Scorponok in scorpion mode or in beast mode whatever you want to call it and this thing is just absolutely massive this thing really does kind of look like it could walk off with a child with a small child this thing is impressively big Scorpion mode is approximately 26 inches in length. And then depending on how you set up the claws, right now I got them at about 17 inches wide. And the tail, let's see, he's about seven inches tall at the top of these legs here. And about uh, just under 12 at the tail, just the way that I have it right now. And of course, you know, as you pose them, it's going to, you know, have different measurements. But he's got the little wheels on the bottom, so you can actually roll them which is, he rolls really nicely for three plastic rollers. It actually does the job very well. He's not dragging or anything like that. Um, as far as articulation, the arms have about the same articulation that they had, you know, in robot mode. So you can just kind of open and close the, the, the claws, kind of uh, bend what was the elbow, right below the elbow. You can actually turn it and you can turn the arms, you know, up and, or the shoulders up and down and in and out some. The head can go up and down a little bit. And then of course the tail, you know, well, if you don't peg it like I just did, you can move down, <laughs> peg that back in place. Uh, and of course, the little stinger part here, you can move this up and down, this up and down, and this up and down. So yeah, there you go, absolutely beautiful. And one of the things I love about the size of this thing is how perfectly it can actually grab a Voyager class figure. It just holds it so perfectly in its claws. It just feels like the perfect size for a Titan class figure where you can just grab a Voyager in your hand and hold them like that. I, I wish I would have thought of doing this in robot mode. I'll probably do it again towards my for my end shot. I'll probably do it again. Uh, that's just such a cool thing that you can do where you can just grab a figure and just hold them in your hand like, yeah, you're tiny. It just feels like it's the perfect size. It's just really, really cool. One thing I do want to point out, it's going to be hard to show on camera here. Uh, let's see if I, maybe if I move this off to the side is the detail on the headmaster is such where they actually put eyes there and little detail on the front so that what is the back essentially the back of the robot head because you can see the bottom of the robot head there or the front rather so what is the back of the robot head actually makes for a convincing scorpion head i love that detail that looks so so cool and the last time i pegged this in place i didn't get it right put that back in place correctly now it's transformed correctly and it rolls really nicely but yeah we just love the detail there on the head there's a sticker set coming out for that head that I'm really looking forward to getting that's really gonna make it look uh, just really gonna make it pop so there's that awesome awesome scorpion mode and again this thing just looks like it could just 
crawl away with a small child is just so, so cool. So getting into the city mode, we're going to once again take off all of the accessories. And this time we are going to remove the head. So let me go ahead and get all these out. Remove the head. And again, the purple piece came off. Again, this, this thing has absolutely no purpose other than to just sit on the back of the head. So, I don't know. Maybe I'll put a dab of clear nail polish on it so it holds a little better. I don't know. I'm going to take the head. We're going to take the headmaster, the little headmaster off. And then the headpiece, we're just going to set it off to the side. Okay, so starting transformation for the city mode. We're going to start by putting away the tail. And folding out the ramp. You can actually just unpack that and let it sit there. We are going to take the claws and point them up. And then we're going to turn them at what was the wrists. So that the back of the forearm here is facing the same direction as the tail. Turn these. And turn them. These, you can do whatever you want with these. The instructions kind of show them laying flat. The G1 figure had them at an angle. So whatever you want to do with these is probably fine. Now we're going to take the legs. We're going to open these up. Should unpeg the sides first. Now we're going to go ahead and open these up. Take these panels, open them so you can move the legs. But we're going to straighten the legs out, bring them out and over like this. And then we're going to turn them, not at this hinge, but over here at what was the thigh. Turn them so that this gray piece is pointing straight up. There's going to be a bit of an angle down on this end. You want this piece laying flat. We're going to do the same thing over here. over your way so now what we want to do is bring this up and this is going to peg there's a clip right here that is going to clip somewhere under here that I'm not seeing at the moment right there so that is going to peg right there that's going to give us our ramp then we can make this flat one more time these uh, panels once again these are going to flip all the way forward just like that same thing on this side these gray pieces that are on the back of the feet these are going to unclip and these are going to come over and these have the clips so that you can connect the other ramps from the other cities or bases or places like Optimus Prime's ramp pl plug into this or Skylinks or Double Dealer. Any one of those guys can just pl plug in right there. Do that on both of these sides. Fix my table. My table is never away from the wall so this is really, really weird. Okay, we're mostly there. Now we're gonna bring in the accessories one more time. So now we're gonna bring in uh, one of the guns and one of these shield pieces and just pick them in together. And then this is gonna clip into the side of the arm here. Same thing with this guy. And I just realized that I goofed with the um, scorpion mode as well. So let me show you this. Remember when I told you not, that you didn't have to take out the little um, headmaster? For the scorpion actually you can because it does have a really cool feature where this opens up and there's a little seat right here so you can take the uh, you can take Zarek and kind of put him in a sitting position and you can do this in city mode as well but it's really kind of meant for scorpion mode so that he can be kind of piloting the giant scorpion so let me just get him in a sitting position here and there's a little spot right here where Zarek will plug right in and then you can take the chest piece and close it back up He's got this little hood right here that fits over Zarek. So it's kind of like this little cockpit there. Uh, so Zarek would actually be piloting the Scorpion mode. And I completely forgot to show that off during the Scorpion mode. So that's on me. But anyway, we can take that back out. This can be popped open. Zarek can now have the little, you know, holes right there. You can use these to stand them pretty much anywhere where you can find these little pegs. Well, let's put them off to the side for now. One more thing to do here, we're gonna take this panel, we're gonna open this up and it's gonna to open towards the back there. There's a panel in here that we opened uh, for uh, robot mode or for scorpion mode. We can close that and now we can take the head and just drop it in here and we can close this back up. Finally, this panel we're gonna take and this is gonna plug in right here. Position these any way you wish. We'll get Zarek and we'll stand them up right here at the top of the base mode. And we'll get this guy all centered up and in shot. And there is Scorponok in his city mode. 
and he looks absolutely amazing. Here in the city mode, Scorponok is approximately 35 inches wide from side to side here. This is, thing is absolutely massive. He is approximately 16 inches deep. And at the towers, he stands about 13 inches tall at the top of the towers here. Absolutely beautiful, stunning figure. Uh, very cool city mode, very reminiscent again of the G1 figure. It looks just like the G1. The only thing that's missing in my opinion here would have been besides that big orange cannon gun for the robot mode, I wish he would have had the little factory pieces or the elevator pieces that went here to interact with some of the smaller figures. Um, so I hope again, somebody comes up with a kit or something that can be used for that. Or I'm kind of thinking of getting ironworks and getting that um, sticker set to convert them into the smelting factory. And uh, maybe, or, uh, I think his name is Rot, and maybe connecting him here and using him as you know some of the accessories for that. But other than that, fantastic figure. Um, I wish I had some little cars or something that I could roll down the, down the ramps here. The other day, uh, my buddy Vinny and I had the Optimus Prime Trailer connected here and we were rolling, well, roller, up and down and it was working just fine. Absolutely, just really, really cool. Very, very fun set, absolutely awesome. I, I just can't say good, enough good things about this thing. For some quick size comparisons, here's Earthrise Titan Class Scorponok next to Studio Series Devastator. So you can see what these guys look like together and as big, as imposing as Devastator is, he's just not holding a candle to this guy. I'm sorry, I love this Devastator, but come on. And for a more modern uh, size comparison, here he is next to Voyager Class Optimus Prime which of course just it's absolutely tiny <laughs> next to this guy it's just one more time because i just think it looks so so cool i love taking these uh, voyager autobots and just putting them in his claw and just having them hold it like this i think they just look so cool because it really just kind of shows the size of scorpionok and how just tiny and puny the rest of you guys are that just i think looks so so cool now here he is next to double dealer so you can see what he looks like uh next to a leader class figure and you know fellow triple changer and also base changer and then of course we've got here uh we've got voyager megatron so you can see another voyager next to him if we can get him to stand straight so you can see what these guys look like together so yeah this is an absolutely fantastic figure i have loved everything about this i'm just again i didn't have scorpionok as a kid i never i never had the g1 version and i still don't i've never actually had any version of scorpionok unless you want to count the one from the movie from the first movie i've never really had a scorpionok figure so this has just been i i've just loved everything about this i love the robot mode i love how g1 he looks how he just looks like the cartoon stepped out of the screen in front of me um the size of him how imposing he is how actually um, articulated he is and posable. The scorpion mode is absolutely fantastic. The city mode is absolutely fantastic. And the fact that all three modes are done well, once again, for a triple changer, usually one of the modes is gonna suffer. All three modes are really, really good. They're interactive. The way that the both of the headmasters actually interact with both the scorpion and with the city mode. And then of course, the fact that the city modes can connect to the other city modes, so you can just build up upon, upon that absolutely fantastic figure just cannot say enough good things about it and i think with that we're pretty much done with transformers earthrise titan class scorpionok let me know what you thought of this figure down in the comments below give me some thumbs up subscribe and hit that bell icon so you're notified when i upload a new video i've also got that donate button up there if you want to hit on that i certainly would appreciate it share with your friends if you like what you see and i'll talk to you next time